Hi, I'm Tracy Watts. Welcome to Mercer Health News. Our topic for today is planning for 2024. Yes, you heard that right, 2024. We're just getting started with this year, but we're already starting to think about next year. And so I've asked Beth Umland, who leads research at Mercer, to join me today. Beth and I have a lot of conversations on this video series, and we always like to talk about her research, what she's seeing, and what we think is going to happen next, and today is no exception. So, Beth, thank you for joining me, and, and tell us what's going on in your world. Well, all sorts of things, but I would say if I was going to pick out the most important trends that we're seeing coming out of bubbling out of the data this year, um, it would have to be, you know, what's going on with healthcare cost. Um, you know, inflation, of course, has been a huge issue this throughout 2022. And yet in terms of health care cost, you know, the increase in 2022 was only a little over 3%, which seems low considering that that's, you know, seriously lagging inflation. But the thing to keep in mind is that health care cost um, us trend usually leads inflation. And so if we're seeing it the other way around this year, that may be a sign that you know we are in for higher cost growth to come. And in fact, when we asked employers what they thought their 2023 cost would be, you know, they're predicting uh, an increase of over 5% for 2023. So you know, signs are all pointing towards accelerated cost growth in 2023 and, and in the years to come. At the same time, we're also seeing employers still very focused on labor shortages and what they can do to enhance their benefit programs to help them in their attraction and retention efforts. And those two things, you know, managing, you know, higher cost growth and providing attractive benefits, you know, don't go together that well. So, Tracy, it seems to me that uh, employers are going to be having to make some trade-offs um, going forward in this environment. You are 100% correct, Beth. Um, I think planning for 2024 is going to be very tricky. Uh, we will see higher healthcare cost trends in 2024. And even if you think your programs are running really well and you've been managing your costs better than trend, good for you, but please plan for um, the fact that it might be a bigger increase going into 2024. If you don't need it, then all is good. But my best advice for you right now, you know, where we're sitting and based on what we know would be to plan for some strategies that could help you manage costs if you need them, because we do think costs will continue to accelerate. There's a lot of pressure on um, hospitals right now in particular because of labor costs and supply costs. And we don't always see that immediately. It takes a couple of years for all of those contracting cycles to work their way into our prices at the employer-sponsored health plan level. So um, I would just encourage you to, to really be mindful of the possibility of that. I know that that's going to be really challenging because we are in a time where you cannot shift costs to your employees. The war for talent that Beth talked about is real and um, people um, are very sensitive to the affordability issue on top of the fact that, you know, they could go someplace else that has better benefits. And so there's a lot of competition around that right now. And it will put a lot of pressure on um, employers to manage costs while not shifting them to employees. So what do you see employers doing, Tracy, in terms of, you know, getting creative with strategies that will help them manage costs but not shift costs? Well, you know, one in particular that um, gets talked about a lot is just further leveraging virtual care. Um, it's typically at a lower cost point for the plan member and also a lower cost point for the plan to reimburse. And so it's a win-win. Um, the only trade-off is convenience, which is a good thing. And so um, I think that, you know, that is very much um, on the list. And, and Beth, um, from what you see in the research that you do with employees, that's a popular strategy, right? Well, it's certainly getting more popular with employees. Um, you know, one thing we track closely every year is utilization of telemedicine. And as you would um, expect, there was definitely a spike in the use of telemedicine during the COVID years, but we're sort of coming out of those now. And yet we're seeing utilization still going up. In fact, it looks as if 2022 is going to show the highest telemedicine utilization that we've seen yet. 
um, even even as people are you know able to return to in person care. So that's a sign that um, employees are really kind of have really embraced um, telemedicine. They also have an appetite for um, sort of app based solutions. You know, in our empl inside employee mind survey. Uh, we asked employers, employees about what their biggest sort of personal concerns are. And, you know, in the top five out of a list of 16 possible concerns was their mental health. And when we dug a little deeper and sort of said, well, you know, what could your employer do to support your mental health? One was, you know, enhancing our EAPs. Employees know about their EAPs. They're comfortable with them. But they were also really interested in virtual um, uh, solutions like mental health apps for relaxation, for, you know, assisting with, you know, personal problems. So they are, are definitely open to virtual care um, in mental health as well as in other um, areas of health care. Yeah, we did some research last year taking a look at the use of virtual behavioral health services, and they were non-existent um, prior to the pandemic, and the utilization has been very strong and continues to be strong um, even, you know, in, into and through um, 2022. You know, we always focus on the strategies that are, that are the most popular that are at the top of the list, but what are some of the strategies that are maybe mid-list that haven't been as popular with employers. They're not yet as prevalent in the market, but maybe they will become more interesting as the market gets more challenging and employers are trying to, you know, prevent cost shifting and maintain affordability for their employees. Well, when we ask employers what are going to be, what are the strategies that you'll be focusing on over the next three to five years? You know, as we've discussed at the top are enhancing benefits and managing high cost claims and expanding behavioral health care. You go a little bit farther down the list and, um, you know, a strategy that we see the largest employers kind of leading with, but maybe it hasn't sort of trickled down into, you know, mainstream uh, companies yet is increasing the use of virtual care throughout the healthcare journey. And I'm thinking of, you know, virtual first plans that are designed to really encourage employees to go to the a virtual uh, uh, healthcare provider first, and then an in-person provider, you know, as needed. Um, another one farther, a little farther down the list um, is steering employees to high value care, like accountable care organizations or centers of excellence. Um, one thing we saw in the data uh, this year is that more employers are adding, you know, enhanced navigation services. And I think that's, you know, kind of part of the same strategy, which is how do we get our employees to go to the high quality, you know, uh, more efficient providers and, uh, and navigation uh, services are part of that. So, you know, I really like the idea of that. I feel like it it brings healthcare into a more future focused lens. Um, you know, throughout our life outside of healthcare, we leverage so much technology, digital tools, apps today in our everyday life, but we haven't really gotten to that point with healthcare. And so I, I like the idea of that a lot. Well, I have heard you talk about 2023 as the year that employers should experiment. Um, and certainly, you know, the virtual care is a piece of it. Are there other places that you would uh, suggest for employers to go experiment? Well, you know, kind of keeping with that trend of future focus, I think it's really important to think about some of these strategies that you need to start today because you know that they're going to pay off over time. And so, you know, you mentioned value-based care. I think that that is one of them where you want to go ahead and get into that now. It's still evolving and developing. You may not have access for everybody at this point, but it will continue to evolve and it will get better over time. And so that I think is a good place um, to, to, um, to, to focus your strategy. Another really important um, focus area is pharmacy, and in particular, specialty pharmacy. Um, pharmacy has been the biggest driver of trend for several years now. Um, it is also um, an area where we're seeing a lot of growth in terms of new drugs, and in particular, specialty drugs. Um, I saw an article this week that suggested that most of the new specialty drugs coming out have a price tag you know, per treatment cycle of over $200,000. And so 
that's something that um, if you're not already planning for that, you need to now. It's only going to increase over time. And so another example of strategies that you need to get into place today because they will definitely continue to pay off at even a higher level into the future. So a couple, couple of suggestions there. All right, well then let 2023 be the year of experimentation. <laughs> well, I think that that is good advice for our audience. I think that we're gonna see some challenges and it's gonna call for some creativity. And um, we are right here to um, help you along that journey. And we'll continue to bring content to our U.S. Health News channel um, to um, share with you as you tackle the challenges ahead. So, Beth, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, thank all of you for being here with us. Thanks, Tracy.